Welcome back to my video series on learning the Woov Box. It's now Saturday. I have had the Woov Box since Monday, so going on six days. And I have to say, I might have to shift the focus of this video series because in those six days, I've gotten a really good handle on what this machine can do and how to do it. And I'm moving on to some of my uh, music production goals. They're techniques that I use in my production on a on another machine, on a computer, in a DAW, that I want to learn how to how to emulate some of those things in here. The next one is called wavetable sweeping. And I'll put a link in the description to a video about that technique if you're not familiar with it. What it does is it gives you uh, long sweeping uh, timbre changes in the background in your pads and drones. Really interesting sound. Um, in the last couple of days, I've also spent a lot of time online on the Woofbox website, going through the support guides and tutorials, um, reading about what the thing can do, and trying to find out things that I that I wasn't just discovering on my own by going through the interface. Stumbled across a page called Expanding Your Woofbox with the AKWF Single Cycle Sample Library. Try saying that 10 times fast. So single cycle samples look like what I'm going to need for emulating wavetable sweeping. Um, so uh, I did follow the link in there to Adventure Kids website, download those samples, and I'm going to show you how you take uh, a single cycle sample and bring it in here and turn it into an instrument. Um, and then, yeah, that, basically that. So the first thing you got to do is launch, launch your Woof box in Bluetooth mode, which you do by holding down the one key. You see it say boot Bluetooth. And then I'm going to move the camera. This is, this isn't going to be awesome. All right, I'm back. I was going to show the, the actual process of using Woof connect to move samples from the AKWF sample kit. Um, onto the Woof box. I'm not going to show that because I don't have a tripod. I don't have another camera. It was going to be terrible watching everything shake around while I did that. So I'm just going to do it off screen. I've got the Woof box in Bluetooth mode. I've got it connected through Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi interface on the computer. Now I'm just dropping samples. So the first one is a human voice sample and you see it show up into slot one. The next one is a piano sample. I'm dropping that one into slot two. Next one is a theremin sample. Dropping that one, it'll show up in slot three. And every time you drop a sample on there, it shows you how much free space you have left. So now I'm dropping the fourth sample on there. Showing up in slot four, I still have 62.15 seconds left. Great. So now I'm going to take this out of Bluetooth mode because Bluetooth mode really kills the, the battery. Turn it off, turn it back on. It boots up in just standard mode. Go into the sampler, go into sample kit two. There are my four samples. And now uh, you need to change the mode of it. Right now, when you when you play that, oh, first turn on my amp so we can hear this. When you play it, it's not really doing very much. So you have to put it into loop mode. You go into here, mood mode once, put it into loop mode. And then if you read the manual, um, the manual page about these sample kits. They weren't recorded in the right key, so you have to shift the pitch on them. Oh, gosh. Sampler mode. Hold it down long enough that your menus show up. Loop mode, pitch one, pitch two. All right, there's a better way to change the parameters if you have, especially if you have a whole kit full of samples, you want to change the pitch and change the, the mode on all the samples at once. Choose your first one till it blinks, hold down right, choose the others. Now they're all blinking. Go through, find your mode, put that on loop, find your pitch, 
with that plus two, let go, and now all of them are doing are doing the right thing. So let's go back into into song mode and uh, set up a new song. You know, I don't know what's in that song. Song four I'm doing. I'm going to initialize it. Get rid of everything that's in there. Uh, go into the chord track. Go into the sequencer. Program my my favorite, uh, the, everybody's favorite chord progression. And it's one, five, six, four. All right, and now to use the samples that I just that I just created. First thing I'm going to do is make everything dry. So go into go into the amp, uh, attack, bring the attack down to zero. Both attacks. I don't like decay. I just want the note to sound as long as I'm holding it, and then I will give it a little. There we go. Sustain up at 127. Leave this sustain down at zero. Release all the way down on on this one. I'm gonna put the release up to about a second here. All right. I'm going to go into the filter, turn the filter off so there's no filtering. Go back into the global mode and make sure everything is off. No bit crushing, no saturation, no distortion, no reverb, no chorus, no delays, nothing at all. So now if I, I'm going to turn up my my main volume. All right. So filtering off, all those other things off. Now I can go into the oscillator and change, change it to my, this is the sample kit that I just, brought in and and the big the the thing it took me a little while let's turn the oscillator one up turn oscillator two off so that we're only hearing the first oscillator all right and now you can hear hear these samples as I as I choose my slices tell from listening to them which one's which. There's one. Okay, slice two sure does sound like a piano to me. Ah, oh, slice three. It's very soft. I don't remember what that one was. Nope, I can't tell by listening. So go back to my computer and look at what they were. Okay, the last one was the violin, theremin, piano, human voice was number one. All right, so this is... Anyhow, so that's the... That's how, instead of using your, you know, your sine waves, your saw waves, triangles, instead of using those as oscillators, you can use a sample that's very short, that's designed to repeat to create a waveform for you. And this is how I expect to make custom samples that contain my complicated 
waveforms for my for my wavetable sweeping and a table is just a, a series of waveforms all put together in a batch on here i'm going to be able to have only 16 waveforms um, in my in my table and then indexing through them going uh, with with the sequencer i guess is how i'll do that i'll play i'll play a note on the sequencer and then when i want to change the waveform i'll play another note on the sequencer that'll be um, the next slice up and that's that's how i'm gonna how i'm gonna attack this puzzle all right anyhow so that's uh some kind of advanced uh sound engineering stuff inside the move box on day six so when people say it's easy to learn it really is you can get onto the advanced stuff pretty fast all right thanks for tuning in and when i make some more progress on something else i'll come back and record another video